hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel today we're going to be talking about how i started my virtual assistant business from scratch i'm going to be giving you the entire story so if you want to listen to that stay tuned to the end and don't forget to like and subscribe how did i become a virtual assistant the story is very interesting because i never intentionally planned to start a business or to become a virtual assistant I actually wanted to become a medical doctor but before we get there let's backtrack a little so let's start from my home country Nigeria where this entire journey began now what happened was that I was one of the loyal obedient students while going to school so from primary school secondary school I was one of those students that kept to all the rules I did everything I was told I always submitted my assignments on time I made sure that I did everything exactly as I was told as I was told and it worked out for me I had good grades I was a good kid in class my teachers liked me and I knew exactly what I wanted to do I was going to become a doctor so I figured if I keep on this path, everything is going to be okay. Now, I want to add that my parents were not exactly well-to-do or wealthy. So I knew that I had to use my brains if I ever wanted to go as far as I wanted to. So fast forward to primary school and then secondary school. And I decided I didn't want to study in Nigeria. I wanted to study outside the country because I knew that it gave me more opportunities to, number one, finish school early and even better job opportunities. Plus, the added benefit of earning income in a different currency that would convert so into so much in naira was a very very good proposition for me but i didn't have the funds to do that so what did i do i decided i was going to um, sign up for a scholarship i kept looking for scholarships until i found one that i fit all the criteria and the requirements and that was not a scam as well so i applied for the scholarship i went for the interviews i prayed i went to church i gave tithe i gave offering i sold seed i did every single thing to increase my chances of getting selected and it worked i got selected i got picked and i got the scholarship i was looking for i had to do one year of a levels first but eventually in 2015 january I finally left Nigeria and moved to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to begin my journey of becoming a medical doctor. It was so exciting. Now, I'm not even going to go into how, like, how the plane ride there was a story of its own entirely, but what was important that was that I eventually got to St. Vincent and I started attending classes. I knew that in about five years, I would become a medical doctor and have my MBBS except i did not see what was coming so in september of 2015 we received a beautifully typed beautifully letter headed letter from our um, agency that said well too long didn't read version is the scholarship is over the agency is closed good luck in all your endeavors it came as a huge shock because i was like wait i did everything right i studied i prayed i fasted i'm here and i'm still studying and i'm still passing my exams what exactly is going on and we found out that the government had pulled the plug on supporting the agency so essentially the scholarship was over and the worst part of everything was that they had no plans whatsoever as to how they were going to get us back home so in on top of the fact that we were essentially abandoned we had no idea if we were going back home to meet our parents at least and it was like what less than eight months since we left home it made no sense whatsoever and it was in that moment that i realized that my entire life i had been living on autopilot I grew up they told me if you're a good girl you study hard you you're obedient everything will work out for you but that was not the case it wasn't working out for me i mean everybody dreams of getting a scholarship and here i was still stuck and i took some time to reflect on exactly what i wanted now before leaving nigeria i wanted to become a medical doctor but as it stood it looked like that was not going to happen so i started asking myself do i really want to be a medical doctor or am i just here because i know that this is the right thing for me to do and when I started evaluating my choices, I realized that in order for my life to go exactly how I want it to, I need to be in control of the major factors that determine how my life plays out. Now, one of those things was money, obviously. I would not be in this situation if I had money or if my parents had a lot more money than they did and they were the ones paying for my education. But even considering that, if my parents' source of income depended on something else and that thing was taken away from them, then it means I would still be back in the exact situation I, I was in at the moment. And I knew this because I had friends 
who, even though their parents had sent them to our same medical school, they were struggling with keeping up with the fees, keeping up with paying their rent, feeding, housing, and all these expenses that come from living outside of Nigeria, as well as schooling there. The currency was falling and things were getting more expensive, but the income that the parents of my friends had planned to use to send them to school remained the same. So essentially they were spending more on the same budget. And that really got me thinking. But at that point, I was not trying to become a millionaire or go for world domination. My most pressing need at that point was that I needed something that would help me pay for feeding, housing, at least to get me into the next day. Now, this was September 2015. My school was lenient enough to allow us walk through some kind of solution, agreement, and then I still continued going to school up till 2017 in order for me to complete my basic medical sciences. The entire time I was living off of generous donations, friends supporting me one way or the other, and my parents were actually supporting me paying my rent at that point. But in 2017, a lot of things changed. Like I said, the currency kept falling and I realized I have to find a way to support myself. I have to take back control of my finances because it was the one thing that kept throwing everything off. Everything else was falling out of place because I didn't have money to sustain them where they needed to be. And that's how I started looking for ways to make money online. I'm sure you've done the same thing. You've searched on Google, you've watched YouTube videos and all of that. But what I'm trying to say is that looking for sources of income online led me to discovering what is now a virtual assistant business so basically you offer services to people online as a virtual assistant and they pay you for it as someone who has grown up in a, in a household that was taught how to read and become a doctor because doctors are people that are paid a lot of money to do what they do this was very new and the concept of not needing to go to school get a certificate which i was trying to do before i could get paid for work was, was fascinating. It, it meant that there were so many other opportunities that I could tap into to change my financial status. So I started working on it. So how exactly did I become a virtual assistant? First of all, I needed to figure out what services I could offer. At that point, everything I knew up to then was just science, medicine, math, physics, biology. And I said, well, people are not exactly looking for that online. So what are people looking for? That was the first question I had to ask myself. So I went into Facebook groups. I went into Instagram. I looked around and I started noticing that people were asking certain questions, asking for help in certain areas of their business and obviously if that is what people are asking about that is what they are willing to pay for so i added one plus one and it became two and that just immediately picked out the services i was going to start with now combine that with my lack of skills i had to arrange them in an order of priority like where can i start now and where do i want to get to there were certain skills that were obviously more high paying more lucrative and higher in demand but i didn't have the skills for that yet but i did have the skills for some beginner tasks like admin services i could type i could write i could uh, transcribe maybe somebody sent an audio i could type it out into text format i kept asking myself what are the things i could do for these people i knew that one big skill set that i had and i've always had is problem solving and when i looked at all the things that we were asking for it all boiled down to can you solve a problem for me so i kept it at the back of my mind the entire time if i can solve a problem there's always somebody who is willing to pay for me to solve that problem for them and that is how i kept going in my virtual assistant business so i did start out as an admin and eventually i started designing graphics for on canva i started doing powerpoint slides and presentations i started building websites and every single step i took meant that i improved my skill set i got faster i got better and people paid me more now you may be thinking Okay, this sounds like a fairy tale. This sounds like, well, it's, it's just a story. But I'm going to give you a simple framework that you, you can work with if you're looking to start a virtual assistant business. And this doesn't just apply to virtual assistant businesses. This applies to any business that you want to start and you're an absolute beginner or you're not exactly experienced. The first thing that you should focus on is you should just get going. Now, this, this basically means that your focus should not be on becoming the best. 
is getting started. The one thing that prevents people from actually doing what they want to do is that they overthink the beginning stages of that thing. I want to look perfect. I want to have a logo. I had heard that you need a website. Do I need to take photos? That is not the point. The point of a business is having customers and serving those customers. And that is what you should focus on. How do I get my first customer? Where do I find my first customer? And how can I serve that customer? So the moment you focus on that thing and you keep repeating it over and over again you can get going now once you get going you can get good once you get your first client that gives you confidence boost that no one can explain to you and you have to experience yourself it is validation that what you're doing makes sense and people that don't know you will actually pay you because somebody that does not know you has no incentive to give you their money they worked hard for it so why should they give it to you but if somebody is willing to do that it means that they believe that you are able to give them that thing that they want so you want to be able to get that get over the hurdle of that first client and once you do you want to get better at what you do so you offered you got your first client as a graphic designer for social media um, graphics you're designing on canva you ask yourself how can i get faster how can i make these graphics look better how are other people designing the graphics that they post on instagram that they designed on canva what colors are they using what fonts are they using why does it look so good why does my own look like i don't know a car hit it or something what colors com what color combinations are they using how are they making it better this will involve lots of research lots of time and practice now you can choose between investing time or investing money investing time means you have to watch a lot of videos using a lot of free resources and trying to ask people questions until you get better and you can invest money so that somebody who already knows how to make it better will just tell you click here do this do that and that's it you're there now once you get better then you have to focus on getting smarter about it so now you're a good graphic designer you can do a lot of graphic design you can do things that people are giving you testimonials for your next step is to figure out how can i make this bigger than it is already because you can you there are only 24 hours in a day and there are only so many people you can work with so do you need to add systems do you want to add automations do you need to increase your prices do you need to add people who will be subcontracting under you so that you can take on more work and make more money now this entire framework is not something i came up with it's actually based off of ali abdal's um youtube guide a guide to getting a successful youtube channel or a youtube business and i noticed that you can actually apply it anywhere and looking back on my own journey i can see that that is the exact same step that i took that got my virtual assistant business to be so successful because in the beginning i was just focused on how many clients can i get and how can i serve them and after that i got better i niched down on my services and now i'm able to leverage all the skills that i've gathered over the years and i have my own agency and i'm being much smarter about my business than i was when i first started so this basically means that anybody anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection you are able to start a business online and the reason i'm using a virtual assistant business as this case study besides the fact that it's what i did myself is that it has such a low barrier to entry every other business model out there requires some kind of capital some kind of infrastructure inventory you name it some i even restricted to certain physical locations but this one can be done by anybody anywhere as long as you have the willingness to learn and put in the hard work and you have an internet connection which is why i love the virtual assistant business model so much i have something very special for you because you have watched till this point in the video i'm launching a free three-day live workshop called breakthrough and this workshop is going to give you three days of action pack trainings that will show you how exactly you can start your own virtual assistant business step by step i'll be going live and i'll be teaching you by myself giving you a hands-on experience so that you can implement these things and in three days you will have the perfect foundation for you to start your own profitable virtual assistant business if you've been looking for a business model to dive into to create a second source of income or a first source of income whatever you need to set yourself up financially so that you can actually take control of your life take control of your decisions and what you will do that will make your own life better this is the work 
workshop for you. I don't want you to miss it. I've never done a workshop like this and I actually was going to charge for it, but I decided to make it free. So while I am out of my mind and making this workshop free, make sure to sign up for this workshop. You find a link right here on this page for you to sign up. Just click the link, put in your name and your email address and you get a confirmation email, join the Facebook group and you get more details about the entire workshop. So, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and definitely share it with a friend. Don't be stingy. If you know somebody who wants to start a business and wants to make money online, this is the video for them. And if you want to watch more content, I have other videos on this same topic, like how I made six figures in my virtual assistant business and you can watch it on this page. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.